This is the world of the campus vets. It is a bit different because she's a vet student. She knows that there's no magic pill. In this case, a pigment in his cornea is recovering about 60% of his cornea, and he could eventually end up blind. I've never castrated a horse before. At the Western College of Veterinary Medicine, students in the teaching hospital learn to handle medical and emotional challenges under real life conditions. Timmy the pug may look healthy, but he has a serious problem with his eyes. I let him in one time, we have three steps coming up, and he missed one and went right head on concrete step. Oh, I was just devastated, I thought, oh, poor baby. The pug has been diagnosed with corneal pigmentation. Ready to go, Tim? Owner Nancy Voigt and her children have traveled nine hours to the teaching hospital to get the specialized care that may save the dog's eyesight. How's he doing right now? Is he... Seems a little nervous. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> is this hot as you are? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a suck <laughs> when it comes to my animals. He's my baby. <laughs> So how did you trip Ophthalmologist Dr. Grom and student Alain Fafard give Timmy a final assessment before his surgery. So basically, little pug has pigmentary keratitis, which is nothing other than brown corneas developing. And our objective is to try and keep him visual. And we're going to do that with this small bit of surgery. The surgery is Timmy's last chance to regain his eyesight. These thoroughbred colts are going to be castrated today. It's one of the most sought after procedures for students on the field service rotation. We all wanted to come today. It's something that we're gonna see very often out in practice. At nearby Dunmore Farms, Shannon Burns is one of three students who will turn colts into geldings. I've never done a castration before, so it's nice to have some guidance while we're doing our first one before we get out and practice and we're on our own. Okay. Staff veterinarian Dr. Sue Ashburner will provide that guidance. She has over 25 years experience working in field service. Just gave him a tranquilizer, which is a pre-anesthetic, and it'll work in about a minute. He's quite relaxed, but he'll still be able to walk. Just watch it. Horses have been known to panic when they undergo general anesthesia, even when they've been sedated first. So the students give the colt a wide berth. Perfect. Okay, watch his feet for a second. Right under his head. The pasture is quickly turned into a makeshift operating theater. If the students can't perform the castration within the next 10 minutes, the anesthesia will wear off. Time is of the essence. Am I handsome? What are you doing? Just... Karma the chameleon is in trouble. So how long has he not been eating and not doing well? Uh, he wouldn't take anything from me on Sunday. I managed to get a worm into his mouth on Saturday, but it was just one. And then he stopped drinking probably on Monday. Karma's um, owner, Jenny Frick, is a second year student at the veterinary college. I just want to palpate his little legs. I'm just going to put him down. He doesn't seem as strong in the front legs as he does no, in the back. He's... He doesn't seem to like me doing this very much. He grunts at me when I try he's, to give him he's, water. He's doing it? He's grunting. Christy Jacobson I... is the lead this student on the case. Before. Yeah, he's definitely not a, not a happy camper, that's for sure. On physical, we found he had some joint swelling in his hind legs, and then he did have some pain when we, when we touched his, his front legs. Hey, guys. Christie's supervisor, exotics faculty veterinarian, Dr. Parker, is just as troubled by Karma's condition. 
I would agree with their recommendations. I think he doesn't look very well at all. So what we're planning on doing with this chameleon is taking some blood work to look for an infection, uh, look to see how the internal organs are working, and take radiographs to see if there's any abnormalities we can see. Timmy, the one-year-old pug, is being prepped for eye surgery. His eyelids do not meet when he blinks, and also the hairs on his eyelids are brushing against his corneas, and that's causing further irritation. So the eye tries to protect itself by filling itself up with pigment. If the pigment continues to build, Timmy will be totally blind in a few short years. Student Alain Fafard is on the first day of his surgical rotation. It's pretty hectic this first day. Everybody doesn't really know where things are and where to find things and what to do. So it's just like getting thrown into... It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Timmy is ready for his operation, and so is his surgeon, faculty ophthalmologist Dr. Gron. So, resident gets to assist today, intern and primary student get to watch. I stayed up late. I was trying to actually review some ophthalmology because Dr. Gron, uh, he likes to test his students hard, and uh, so I tried to make sure I wasn't coming in as completely clueless. We're ready. The delicate surgery to save Timmy's eyesight is about to begin. I've never castrated a horse before, but I've okay. seen it a number of times. Shannon Burns is under the gun to complete a castration before Red wakes up from general anesthesia. It's not an easy procedure for any man to watch, and trainer Fred Gordon is no exception. The students are using an emasculator. The device at once severs the testicles and seals all the blood vessels to prevent bleeding. That was easy. <laughs> it's not pretty, is it? <laughs> it's not bad. It's not a barbarian surgery. They're under anesthetic. They don't feel it. He says, I don't want to get up soon. Because only a small percentage of male horses go on to breed, the majority are castrated. Stallions can be very aggressive. They're very territorial. They uh, are hard to keep confined because they want to be in groups of mares. And most people don't have the facilities or the know-how to handle stallions. So the bulk of our male horses are castrated or gelded, and they just become quiet and easy to handle. There we go. One cold castrate, there. one more to go. Coming up, upsetting news about Karma the Chameleon. Student Jenny Frick is increasingly worried about her sick chameleon, Karma. She hopes that x-rays will solve the mystery of his deteriorating health. Here you go, go see mom on the heat pad. <laughs> there you go. It doesn't take long for Dr. Tryon from medical imaging to spot a problem with Karma's joints. Yeah, I'm looking for a picture of gout. Yeah, that's what I would be thinking about. The radiograph showed abnormalities in the joint. That's most suggestive of uric acid deposits, which indicates gout. Based on the radiographs, it looks like gout is pretty high on our, our list. Gout occurs when uric acid builds up and forms painful crystals on bone joints. In advanced cases, it is untreatable. What do we do if that's what it is? It's extremely painful. You can't reverse it. In advanced cases, we recommend euthanasia. But I don't think it is so bad right now that we need to jump into euthanasia right away. Okay? Why don't you and I go for a walk and come back, come back and see if the blood results are bad? Okay? I'll get him all set up in his cage. The owner's pretty upset. I think she had an idea that there might be, uh, it might be a serious problem, um, but still she's, she's very attached to this chameleon, so she's okay, pretty she upset right now. She'll be okay with me, okay? There is one final Sounds test good. that will determine Karma's fate. Timmy can barely see. His eyes are irritated to the point they are clouded with pigment. 
So when you're a pug and you have an eyeball that's sitting out like a headlamp on a car, the lids can't get all the way over. So the tear film dries in the central area. If we get the tear film distributed properly, all this pigment should resorb. You gotta come back and Dr. Grom begins the delicate task of altering Timmy's eyelids so the pug can see. This is the area we're correcting. And you see all these little hairs that are lying in here. And if you watch when I roll this out, there's hair that goes down here for, well, for an ophthalmologist mile. Let's put it that way, a long way. So we're going to take all this out, and then we're going to suture these lids together. You can see about easily 60% of this whole cornea is covered by black pigment. Now, not all of that is due to all this hair, but a good portion of the pigment in this area is due to that. And you can see some scars in here. Dr. Gron removes a triangle-shaped wedge from the corner of each eye. This releases a ligament that will help the eyelids close. Are we having trouble, Jess? <laughs> Student That's Alain Fafard has been waiting for this opportunity for a long time. It's definitely nice to be in surgery compared to the last three years I've spent in vet college here where it's always in the classroom. It's gonna to be tough, however, because I'm a doer type of person. I like to be hands-on. It's gonna take some patience. It's hard to simply be watching a lot of the time. As the surgery progresses, Timmy's worried owner, Nancy Voigt, waits outside with her children. And now we're gonna suture that skin together, and you're gonna see the lid start to get smaller. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. Hopefully that doesn't. Now, we gotta wait and see what happens with this little guy. Make sure that he can blink properly over that eye. Outside of town, Rocky is the second of two colts at Dunmore Farms to be castrated. This time, vet student Laura McDonald is in the surgeon's shoes. Okay, well, we've made two incisions uh, sort of over the testicles. I'm pushing up all the sub-Q tissues and the tissues under the skin. <laughs> Does he have a higher voice? Everybody did exactly what they were supposed to and the horses cooperated and it was a good day. That's what we like to have when we're teaching. So off to our next call now. Back at the veterinary college, it's lambing time in the sheep barns. Herdsman Andy Hansen is monitoring the process. There's a ewe lamb that's off in the corner all by herself. That's a good indication that she's going to start to lamb. Within an hour or so, if she hasn't had a lamb, we should check her out and see if there's a problem. Moments later, the ewe gives birth. The lamb is only moments old when faculty veterinarian Dr. Clark and his team of students arrive to check on the mother's progress. It doesn't take long for them to spot a problem. Looking at the size of the ewe, looking at the size of the lamb, it seems highly likely that there would be another lamb on the way. If it looks like that lamb's having taking a little time to come out, we may just assist it and deliver it. Just going to uh, catch the ewe up, and then we're going to do an exam on her just to see whether there's another lamb in there. You put on a sleeve, and you dive in there and see what you can feel. A quick search by student Carla Huber confirms their hunch. There is another lamb, and the delivery Good. could be difficult. You're looking for three things, either a nose and two feet, or a tail and two feet. And in this case, we have a tail only, meaning that both back legs are tucked up underneath. It's a true breach. The twin lamb is in a dangerous position one that could threaten its life if left for much longer. Coming up, Timmy is reunited with his family. Yes, okay. Timmy the pug is recovering from surgery on both eyes. Timmy's surgery went really well. He should be able to blink better and he's set to go home later this afternoon.
Faculty ophthalmologist Dr. Grom delivers the good news to Timmy's owners. Okay. Surgery went well. Little facelift and the corner <laughs> you know, It's going to take at least oh, three to six months before I can really assess what it's going to do to his corneas. Okay. Make sure there's no scarring, no more rolling, that sort of thing. Timmy's vision won't clear overnight. Now that his eyes can blink and lubricate the cornea properly, the pigmentation that has caused his blindness will eventually go away. And then he's got a little bit of a collar on, but he's got to keep on. Timmy's vision may still be cloudy, but there is one face he can see clearly. I'm asking him to pick you up this way. Yes, why you He looks better than I thought he'd look. Yeah, actually, is his face even shaved? No. No. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Over in the barn, a sheep struggles to give birth to her second lamb that is in a breech position. Put the head down and then actually put your weight on her neck a little bit. And just see the lamb just pop straight out, which is unusual, but certainly it meant that we didn't have to interfere, which is for the good of the ewe. Just want to get all of the membranes off its nose. All right, there we go, little one. We'll leave this ewe with her lambs here for a few minutes just to uh, try and let the bond form between the mother and her babies. It's not looking good for Karma the chameleon. X-rays show signs of articular gout, a condition caused by the buildup of uric acid in the joints. You can see there's actually like little formed areas. Granular, Granular structures? Granular structures, yeah. Right now, we are trying to anesthetize the chameleon. We're going to be going in with a little bit of a needle to aspirate some of the joint fluid off of his swollen joints. If student Christy Jacobson finds uric acid crystals in the joints, it will confirm the gout diagnosis. This is um, probably our best diagnostic test for articular gout because it'll tell us what exactly is in the joints. Karma's owner, Jenny Frick, a second year veterinary student, hopes the test will turn out negative. Gout can be extremely painful, and sadly, there's no cure for it. I'm hoping it's not bad news, crossing my fingers. I got blood on my corpus. Oh, there's a tiny little bit at the tip there. Yeah, it looks like you got something. Yeah. The tiny sample will have huge ramifications if it comes back positive from the lab. Um, unfortunately, if it's gout, then it's probably bad news long-term for this chameleon. Coming up, <laughs> a veterinarian in sheep's clothing. <laughs> it's confirmed, Karma has an advanced case of articular gout. His owner, veterinary student Jenny Frick, can't bear to see the chameleon live out the rest of his life in pain. My first thought when he got sick and I had to bring him in and I had to start thinking about euthanasia was, I'm a vet student, this isn't supposed to happen to vets. Um, <laughs> you know, we're supposed to fix everything, but we can't. And um... Dr. Parker prepares for the final stage of karma's life. He wasn't eating very well. He wasn't able to walk very well. He would fall over and wouldn't be able to stand up. So. Since there is no cure, there's nothing that we can do to improve his quality of life. Um, we decided that it was time to euthanize. To make it painless, the chameleon is sedated before he is given the injection that will stop his heart. Karma will simply go to sleep and never wake up. This is the most humane thing that we could have done with Karma. Okay, I think he's ready. You ready? Down, you know that that's the right thing to do. You never want to let go of them, but you never want to make them suffer either. So it's, it's really sad. Do you want to spend more time with them? It is a bit different because she's a vet student, but I think that helps. She knows that there's no answers, that there's no magic pill that you can give the animal and make them better. So she understands all that. And I think she's sad, so she's dealing with it like anyone would. She's 
Across campus, the veterinary team isn't having much luck moving the sheep and her newborn lambs to a warm barn. She knows where she landed and she doesn't want to leave that area. What you can do is pick the lambs up and you keep the lambs low and you move slowly. What will typically happen is that the ewe will actually follow the lambs. Bleat, Elena. If she starts to lose interest, bleat at her like a lamb. Elena, bleat. We want to hear your bleating. <laughs> Dr. Clark resorts to an apparently tried and tested form of the Pied Piper. Meh, meh, meh. It always seems embarrassing, but if you make lamb-type noises, you'll keep the user attention and you'll keep her following. <laughs> and sure enough, wherever the little lambs did go, mom was sure to follow. Thank you. 